Uh, my name is John McTague. I am here because I'm teaching a class at Towson University on um, racial and economic inequality. Uh -huh. And so I have students are required to do 12 hours uh, of work with the sixth branch nice. this semester. Instead of doing a research paper, uh -huh. they're coming down and uh, doing this sort of work. So I'm out here doing it with them, so I'm not a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They've seen me, they've seen me uh, busting my butt along with them. Maybe I'll have a little more credibility cool. uh, for, the, for the goal. And really the goal is to get them it's at Towson University is where the, the class is, so it's to get them out of Towson and uh -huh. down, you know, uh, seven, eight miles down, down York Road, Route uh -huh. 1 Ave, to um, uh, be engaged with their broader community mm -hmm. that isn't that far away but has a different life experience. Absolutely. And uh, so getting them doing things rather than just talking about things. That's absolutely. So, um, as a, a teacher, I, I talk a lot about things. <laughs> and it's, it's good to get out here and actually do something that's relevant to the material rather than absolutely. just talk. So. Could you give uh, an example of how some of this hands-on experience relates to like what you talk about in class, just kind of tie the two together? Yeah, so for instance, I was out here a couple weeks ago at the uh, Oliver Farm uh -huh. site, which is east of here, and um, I had six of my students were there that day. Nice. It was 60, 65 degrees out. It was a beautiful day. I was there. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, you were there too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so for instance, we've been talking in class about how um, you know, the deindustrialization of cities left people without employment opportunities mm -hmm. and what happens to neighborhoods when the economic opportunity goes away and and whether people are wealthy or poor based on how smart they are, you know, their effort, their mm -hmm. ingenuity, or is it because of, you know, the sort of the opportunities that they had where they grew up. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in a poor neighborhood, are, are you going to be poor? And so, for instance, we were working on mulching some of the fruit trees on the other side of the tracks uh -huh. from the farm. And uh, we saw the uh, postal guy walk up, and there's the row of row homes. Maybe one of them is occupied. <laughs> the rest are all boarded yep. up, and we're yep. all. And then he's walking by, and he puts the mail in one slot. And you know that was something that my students talked about afterwards. Like I, that really, just seeing that, seeing the mailman walk up and seeing 12 homes and one home gets mail. Homes, one of them gets mail was yeah. like, oh wow. Another student was talking about how. Um, there was a little boy playing basketball outside uh -huh. on a, a not a not as nice as these rooms over here. It was sort of the room was kind of facing the wrong way. <laughs> you could throw it through the hoop instead of in and over. Um, and she was just talking about like watching him playing basketball and, and thinking about like you know this kid didn't have a choice about where he grew up and, and Absolutely, what yeah. kind of opportunities were available to him. And she was reflecting on how you know she came from a really nice middle class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. went to, private schools and mm -hmm. so she was just like sort of observing her surroundings and thinking about how opportunities that she had were different from opportunities probably the kids who grew up around here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think even just getting them out here and it's the first time that a lot of students have seen you know they never would have a reason to come to a neighborhood like Oliver. Absolutely. Unless they were Absolutely, yeah. told to. Yeah. Um, you know uh, and so just to get them to see a different neighborhood and, and see a group like the Sixth Branch the other thing I really like is the the example that the Sixth Branch sets. Uh -huh. You know, it's a group of people who realize that they had a skill set that could be put to use mm -hmm. um, to benefit their community. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that by the end of the semester, my students, something clicks where they realize that they've been given opportunities mm -hmm. and they have skill sets and, and knowledge that they can put to use, you know, in addition to trying to get a job, which everybody wants to get a job, but mm -hmm. being sort of uh, engaged members of their communities. And, mm -hmm. It's, I'm a political science, it's in the political science department, so mm -hmm. getting them to think about citizenship is more than just showing up to vote every couple of years. Yeah. Uh, actually being a community member is is um, a much more involved and valuable yeah. level of citizenship. So so that was really great. I've got, actually one of those two is, is in my class, the other one's a roommate. I got dragged out today. Um, so I'm interested to talk to her later. So it's spreading already, See, that's good. Yeah, yeah. About, about half of the class, I've got, there's 19 students, about half of them have been out to something so far. Cool. Um, they have a deadline to get out here by April 1st mm -hmm. to something. Um, and then uh, they, they do have to write a paper about it. But mm -hmm. It's different from plugging away in the library kind of paper. They come out here yeah. and they do something and they, 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 they actually have something to write about. Yeah. yeah. Like what they did, not yeah. you know, what they read about what somebody else did. So, yeah. Yeah. That's really so, cool. It's exciting. I'm, 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 uh, it's the first time I'm doing something like this yeah. with the class, so it's totally new to me. Which is another reason why I'm out here, so mm -hmm. I know what they're doing, so I can have a frame of reference to mm -hmm. connect it back to what we're talking about in class. So, um, 
they also in the class they have to watch the first three seasons of The Wire. Really? So <laughs> yeah, apparently that was filmed around here. Uh, so they're they're uh, they're reading, you know, uh, textbook type reading that you do in the class. They have to watch The Wire and then they have to come out here sort of tie it all together and make some sense out of it. Very cool, man. I wish I had a professor like you when I was in school. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's fun. You know, that's uh, the the benefit of it is that uh, for me, my, my homework is that I have to watch The Wire so that uh, yeah. I can talk about it too. So, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I want to be doing. And so making 20 other people do it because I can. <laughs> <laughs> this little bit of power that I have over this class for a semester. Um, well, it's the power to shape lives and the yeah. and the mold minds. So. Well, I, I hope so. So, um, so we'll see how it goes. Again, it's the first time I'm doing it, so I don't know. It could be a complete failure. <laughs> I think it's going to go well. I don't well. think it will be. I think, I think it's going to go I well. I think you're on to so. something good. Yeah, I, I hope really so. Do. If so, I'll, I'll do it again. So, yeah. I'll be back out here at some other class sometime. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for uh, yeah. talking to us and telling us what you're doing. Thanks for coming out today. I really thanks appreciate it. Thanks for giving it. me a break from trying to cut holes in the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to work. <laughs>